My aunt, which is my mom's sister, she moved to London years and years ago to become a model and, a, and an actress. When she was on her deathbed to let me know she had something to tell me. And she wanted to, wanted to tell me that when her and my mother were children in St. Thomas Virgin Islands, which is where they grew up, they were at this megalithic site. There's a site somewhere out there in St. Thomas that's got made of giant stones. And while they were at this site playing around, they, she said that advanced beings, same term my mother used, came and took them and took them away. And they, she said that they lost time and brought them back in a few hours or so, she estimated, and that our family had been, according to her, working with them in the past. Right now on Higher Journeys with Alexis Brooks. Hey, y'all. Welcome and welcome back because I know a lot of you are watching multiple times to this show, Higher Journeys with Alexis Brooks. Of course, I am your host, Alexis Brooks. And, I'm, you know, I'm particularly giddy today. I always am when I have a couple of friends on today. And I do indeed. We have Mr. and Mrs. Billy Carson. William. Is it William or Billy? I never it's Billy. It's, it's actually a- Billy. That's my oh. birth name, Billy Carson, yeah. Okay, I would start. To, I was going to get real formal. The <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Elizabeth, how you doing, girlfriend? I'm doing good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to stay cool in this, this crazy heat on the East yes. Coast we are dealing with. And I know a lot of you around this country are dealing with it as well. But I digress. We're not here to talk about the weather. You can go uh, watch that on the news. Listen, guys, we're going to talk to Billy and Elizabeth both about a lot of stuff they got going on. What else is new? This has been unprecedented how busy you have been, uh, Billy Carson in particular, on the heels of Joe Rogan, on the heels of uh, Patrick, that David, and others. Just a quick comment on that. How has that been, this whirlwind and and this this sort of tour of yours? (laughs) Yeah, no, it's been great. I mean, a lot of people are reaching out and we're getting put onto a lot of, you know, amazing podcasts and are getting some crazy, crazy numbers. I know. And I got to say, you know, I got to give a special thanks to Elizabeth for uh, negotiating and collaborating and and making contact and finding new contacts and getting people's contact information so that we can make these connections and we can actually get on these shows. Absolutely. Well, Elizabeth, I know you've been doing some crazy work behind the scenes and, and we give you props for that consistently. Um, but Billy, I'm going to give you props too, because the reason why they're saying yes is because you've got a lot to share. Uh, I know it's controversial to some, particularly because now you're kind of folding into the conversation, Terrence Howard and his philosophy. And I mean, look, I'm just going to say this right up front. We're going to go off topic for a minute. Yeah. Folks aren't used to seeing folk talking about so many heavy things. I'm just going to yeah. go there. It's the truth. So That's this is a true. new paradigm for a lot of people, people that look like us and people that don't. Mm-hmm. And so it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a shock, I think, in a good way. So yeah. we're happy to have you on the scene along with Terrence. Are you going to be talking to Terrence Howard at any t- yeah. at any point? Well, we've been having some private conversations and uh, we had something set up, but it didn't work out timing wise because of his uh, his show schedule. But mm-hmm. We're going to get together eventually, but we've just been having some private conversations, some private meetings. Excellent. All right. Well, I know people will be waiting with bated breath as to what uh, what a back and forth with the two of you will be like, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see it soon. Okay, onward. Lots to cover, you guys. I, look, you got a best-selling book uh, that just came out, I think, last month, right? Fractal the Holographic yeah. Universe. I think it's yeah. already on the bestseller list, number 18, mm-hmm. I think. It's in a few yeah. categories. Um, you've got the Conscious Awards coming up. We're definitely going to be talking about that. But you know what, Billy? You know, I called you up the other day and I said, hey, B, listen, I'm going to give you fair warning here. I want to talk about something that uh, we talked about years ago. Uh, But I want to bring it back to the conversation because I had a bit of an epiphany having to do with your contact encounters. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a plural Mm -hmm. because I heard you. I think you were uh, on Patrick, uh, Patrick David's show where you talked about not only what your mother had told you after you were at, was it uh, Opalaka Airport in 1977 and you saw something anomalous. Tell tell us about that. I don't want to give the story away, but for those that haven't heard the story, Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us what happened. I know you've told it many times, but if you don't yeah. mind, indulge us. Repeat that story for us. Sure, no problem. I was, we were living in Miami in Opalaka, near the Opalaka Airport. Mm-hmm. So these private planes would go over our house. It's a very small airport. Uh, they would go over our house. And I'd look up and look at these prop jets flying over my house, sometimes very small jets. Now I know they were Lear jets. 
Um, but they would fly across the horizon very slowly. And it always amazed me to see these planes moving so slow. And in my mind, even though I was only seven, I, I realized they had to be moving faster to, to stay in the air. Uh, and then this one day, uh, this is this is 1977, you know, this one day this object comes across the backyard and it's not a private jet. It's an elongated, elongated egg and it's moving extremely fast. It clears the horizon in seconds, not minutes, and it's uh, got no tail fin, no cockpit, no windows, no doors, no anything, and it's completely silent. And then as it clears out, it comes back and it stops, it like on the, on the, like boom, this instantly stops. It's not like a slow to a stop. It just came and just boom, stopped, completely silent, and then it went, it just took off again and disappeared. And I ran in the house and I was screaming, oh my God, I can't believe what I just saw. And that's when my mother told me that uh, she said, you know, son, they were advanced beings on this planet a very long time ago, and they lived on top of mountains. She said, you have to check out Machu Picchu. This is in the 70s. Uh, she didn't call them aliens. She said advanced beings. And she mm -hmm. said, everything that's been done has already been done. There's nothing new under the sun, which we know that's in, Cle in Ecclesiastes in the biblical text. Uh, but that always struck me like, wow. My mom just dropped some knowledge on me. Um, and so I was very comfortable from that point forward, believing that there was something more going on than what I had been privy to, you know, just growing up as a kid in the city. She seemed very definitive, Billy, when she made these statements. They did, she yeah. didn't say, I think there may be, or, you know, it's as if mm -hmm. she may have had firsthand, uh, a firsthand account that yeah. would lead her to be so definitive. And this is what I want to get into, Billy, because, you know, look, you and I, I think this was the very first conversation we had, it seems, many years ago. It was quite a few years ago now yeah, where you shared, I think, yeah. with me for the first time, yeah. your own, uh, this would be your second encounter that happened in your home uh, with your with your family, with your kids. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't think we need to go back into that because I know you've told that several times and I know you get very emotional when you talk about that. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll put a link for people if they want to hear the whole story. Yeah. But putting that together, uh, well, mm -hmm. before we go into to, to that and putting the dots together, I, I now want you to talk about your aunt a little bit and then we'll circle back. I know that yeah. she passed. I'm so sorry, uh, several years ago, but she yeah. had a revelation for you that's connected. Why don't you share that with our audience? Yeah, my aunt, which is my mom's sister, uh, she moved to London years and years ago to become a model and, a, and an actress, which she accomplished. She's in a James Bond movie and a, a daily, uh, one of those daily, not soap, a, opera. soap opera, thank you, babe, a soap <laughs> opera. And so she did it very well for herself. Uh, she lived a pretty good life. Um, she ended up getting cancer, unfortunately, uh, and she was on her deathbed. Now, she's one of those people from a time frame of no cell phones, no computers, no pagers. She didn't know I was forbidden knowledge. She didn't know anything about what I was doing, what I was up to, any type of fame I might have been gaining online and those types of things. This wasn't in her realm. But she, uh, I raised her son for a short period of time when they were having some issues with him. And um, uh, Paul, he came down to live with me. So she felt this deep connection to me, I can tell, because it was something like I had taken on a responsibility for her that she couldn't handle at that time, you know? Uh, and so she contacted Paul and had him get a hold of me when she was on her deathbed to let me know she had something to tell me. And she wanted to, wanted to tell me that when her and my mother were children in St. Thomas Virgin Islands, which is where they grew up, uh, they were at this megalithic site. There's a site somewhere out there in St. Thomas that's got made of giant stones. And while they were at this site playing around, as they usually did, they, she said that advanced beings, same term my mother used, came and took them and took them away. And they, she said that they lost time and brought them back in a few hours or so, she estimated. Um, and that our family had been, according to her, working with them in the past. This was just so bizarre, but she told me this. And... Um, her and my mother had the strongest connection out of all the siblings, which is right. pretty interesting. Okay, there's something deep really happening here. You saw my mouth drop, right? Oh, wow, your family. Well, look, this is where I'm going. This is where I'm driving uh, with this, guys, and, and with uh, with you, Billy, because I don't know that you've ever had a conversation or really given it a lot of thought. I want to find out. 
as to this idea of intergenerational contact. You know, it's something that I've dug into quite a bit. And I do think that these are not one off situations. I, I know that Grant Cameron, who's a who's an astute uh, researcher in, in ufology, really feels that, A, if you've had one contact encounter, you're a lifer. And that, that's a quote. But he's yeah. also a big proponent of uh, intergenerational is, is more common than we know. And I dare say you're you're in that you're in that realm. Why do you think your aunt had to share this with you before she left this earth? You know, that's a great question. I, I just it was just something she wanted to let me know. Uh, I guess she figured that my mother never really told me. Maybe she had a conversation with my mom before my mom passed away. Mm. Um, you know, because my mom was talking to everyone before she passed. And then so they may have had a conversation. I'm just assuming maybe they had a conversation and maybe she just felt like I just needed to know since I was the oldest. I'm the oldest of, of the siblings. And so I'm next in line. So maybe it's just something that she wanted me to be aware of. Or maybe she knew something more about this generational <laughs> encounter that's situation true. that I know about. And she's letting me know maybe it's OK. You know, Yeah, that's obviously where I'm going, Billy. I mean, look, I'm, I don't want to play Columbo here. And I certainly don't want to make you put you on a spot where you feel uncomfortable. I think it's quite fascinating. There was there, uh, my my sense is that it's the latter, because my next question is, did she know about your contact encounter? Did you feel the need if she didn't know to tell her? Did you have an epiphany? Big lots of big questions. Let's I, I'd love to dig into this more. Yeah, I didn't get to tell her any of the information. I was just trying to absorb what I was getting, trying to absorb what you know was being told to me. Um, I, I didn't give any, I didn't give up any additional information other than that. I just really was just like, wow, you know, thank you for telling me and appreciative. But I didn't give up any information about my encounters. You know. But you must have thought about that fateful day when you were approached by the beings in your home when she when she told you because that happened well that did happen before uh she passed correct yeah oh yeah years before a decade before yeah yeah so i was just you know i was just blown away i really <laughs> you know that's why i dedicated my first book to my mom and i dedicated mm -hmm. the fact that she told me to go to machu picchu it's in the compendium of the emerald tablets right in the beginning of the book and she told me that in 77 you know mm -hmm. yeah there's no doubt a, a a repository of information and intelligence, if you will, there when it comes to your family. Did it get you to thinking about the intergenerational uh, familial contact? Did it get you to thinking it might have my children or grandchildren or grandmother or other family members, might they have also had some form of contact or even encounters with the paranormal? I mean, I, this this runs across many different sort of phenomena, certainly. Oh, definitely. I mean, I considered it a lot. Obviously, um, just the fact that it happened to me more than once. And since then, we've seen UFOs together, Elizabeth and I. We took people on a UFO hunt uh, to actually see. Where were we? We were in Joshua Tree? Uh, California, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a giant rock. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's like, yeah, it's just like, you know, this has become commonplace for us. So I'm just wondering and keeping a lookout for, you know, other people in my family to see if they have any any stories or any information or anything they, they want to share. But so far, I haven't heard anything too much outside the range of the norm. But uh -huh. uh, you never know. But could it be generational? It kind of seems like it, it could be. There's a, been a lot of stories. I've started researching the topic. And a lot of people are experiencing something similar to what I experienced Absolutely. through different generations. So maybe for whatever reason or whatever their agenda is, they're tracking people multi-generational and following just like we kind of do, you know, National Geographic, we'll go and abduct uh, an actual animal, right? We'll we'll put it to sleep and abduct it. It'll, it will lose time. And then we will put a tag in it and we will track it and watch it grow and watch it mate and watch it have its own offspring. And then we'll track their offspring. That's right. what we do in the wilderness. So, you know, it's nothing. I think it's the same thing happening to us. You have referred to us as being a grand cosmic experiment on many occasions. And I know you talk about it in your new book. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that uh, bode well for what we're kind of talking about here? Yeah, absolutely. A grand cosmic experiment, you know, like the fractal holographic universe. And I think that there are sentient beings living throughout this entire universe. And, uh, you know, we are just one iteration of a, an unlimited number of life forms that exist. Thank you, babe. And uh, she's holding the book right now. And, um, you know, I think that there are beings that have advanced 
far beyond where we are now, spiritually and technologically. And from their eyesight, potentially we could be considered even ants and they could be watching mm -hmm. us and monitoring us just like we go to the Serengeti Plains of Africa and monitor and watch animals there. If we could be going through the similar, a similar situation. They could be watching and see how far we can advance in a particular amount of time. And maybe they're just amazed that we have gone so far in such a short period of time. In only 100 years, we went, we went from a horse buggy and carriage to putting remote control cars on Mars. And we have Voyager 1 and 2 going into interstellar space. That's a miraculous uh, amount of technology in only 100 years. So maybe they're really coming here to visit, to watch and see this uh, this amazing outburst of technological insight happening in a very small window of time. Mm -hmm. Indeed. And I know you've talked about that. You folded that into your narrative for uh, for Anunnaki Ancient Secrets Revealed as well. I mean, these, these threads are all connected. I want to come back to you before we, because I want to launch and use that as a segue to launch into your book that uh, Elizabeth is so lovingly holding up. We're going to put a screenshot up as well and obviously have a link for you to get it. Um, Billy, you, I remember you told me, we've had so many conversations over the years, but one year you and I, I believe it was a private conversation where you told me that you had RH negative blood. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a long time ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've had a lot of conversations and I believe yeah. this was off the record, but I believe you, you may have talked about it before, but I bring that up because this has come up within the context, context of contact encounters and people that have this fairly rare blood type. Yeah. Were you able to find out too. blood type of other family members of yours? Yeah, my mother had RH negative. I have RH negative, um, which is, you know, bizarre. And I don't know if any, uh, none of my uh, my children have RH negative. Um, but uh, it's so weird to have the mother and a son, you know, have RH negative at the same time. Absolutely. So only 15% of the generation of the, of the world population have RH negative blood. But yeah, so there's definitely something to do with that. I mean, you know, ge uh, we call geneticists call it alien, you know, <laughs> alien mm -hmm. blood. Only, only they're referencing it is not that we're aliens, but that it's so far out there, they can't really understand or put their finger on exactly why we have this blood type or why it even exists on this planet. Right. Isn't that something? Well, yeah. did we crack the case? What do you think? I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat a dead horse, so to speak, but I think that you know, when I heard the little anecdote that you shared with, with Patrick Bet David, I said, aha, something's happening here. And I, I fear, totally feel, I totally sense that your beloved, uh, both mother, but particularly your beloved aunt, who had to share this with you. I, I'm going to go out and go on the record and say, I believe she's aware of your contact, whether you told her or not. And yeah. I think she had an obligation to tell you. I think, I think you'll find out more, but, uh, yeah. Blessings to you all. This is quite, quite an adventure. Okay, now I'm going to pass. I'm going to take the baton and give it over to Elizabeth because you said you both have had uh, uh, sightings. Elizabeth, mm -hmm. what about you, my dear? Do you feel yourself to have some level of contact at, at some point? I, I don't, to be honest. I mean, until we took all those people to California to actually go watch UFOs, I had never really seen anything, never had contact, but I did used to sit out on my deck and just watch the sky for UFOs all the time. So throughout my lifetime, I've always known that we're not the most intelligent species in the whole universe and that there's other forms, life forms out there. So I was always searching, but no, I never got contact or anything like that. No. Okay. That you know of. I always say that you know, know of. Yes, that so I know. Of. She's, she's only just recently seen UFOs, yeah. which, two years in a row mm -hmm. at Giant Rock Tons. in uh, Giant Tons Rock. California. <laughs> Tons of them. <laughs> yeah. Lots of them. It's crazy. Yes. Wow. Well, the plot thickens, the mystery continues, and we do have a right, I think, to know a little a little bit of the mystery, as Richard Feynman once said. It does, does no harm to the mystery to know a little bit about it. Okay, so you're cracking the mystery open, Mr. Carson, in terms of understanding the nature of reality. Let's now segue to your book, mm -hmm. uh, Fractal Holographic Uni Universe. This is this is amazing stuff, um, and it's already a bestseller. No no wonder, but this is, I think, in what are the areas? Oh, I looked it up today on Amazon. It's like number yeah, 18. Uh, fract fractal Mathematics, Quantum Theory, and Science and Philosophy. Wow. Yeah. It even well, hit number one in fractal mathematics and number one in quantum theory last week, I think it was. You know, it jumps up and down, but 
at its highest point, it was number one in fractal mathematics and number one in quantum theory, number four in science and philosophy I at that, on that day. Yeah. Give us the thumbnail, if you would, and then I'm going to share a little a little treat we're going to have for our members that Billy kindly. Uh, well, you know, I'll, you know, what? I'll say that for later. I'll talk about that later. I'll cliffhanger. Give us a thumbnail about what this book is about. And is this a book that a layperson can read? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that, that question. So the book is about the fractal holographic nature of the universe, a fractal being that to simplify it, what you see in the whole, you can find in the smallest piece. In the Hermetic Principles, we call it as above, so below. Yeah. So the ancients were already eluding to this type of fractal holographic nature of our matrix in ancient times. And so if you look at a hologram and you go down to the smallest piece of that hologram, you'll find the entire image in the smallest piece. Now, if you take that into the real world, Physicists have now looked at the heart of matter. And when they zoom in as close as they can, they saw something crazy. They're beginning to see the whole in the smallest amount in the form of fractals. And even they also have now discovered something called pixelation, which really disturbed them because when I when they're zooming in, the only thing they lose is resolution. So as you get closer, deep into the subatomic realm, you're almost saying, well, we should be get we should get more clear things get a little bit more blurry. That's so right. what they discovered was that we have pixels in this universe. And then Professor Sylvester James Gates Jr., uh, who I feature in the book as well, him and his team of math ma mathematicians discovered the Adinkra codes, named after the Dogon tribe in Mali, Africa, their Adinkra symbols. When you take these symbols and turn them into three-dimensional objects, they unlocked mathematical codes in there he, which he coined the phrase adinkra codes. And these numbers, these symbols, the mathematics hidden in these symbols, I should say, are the same error correcting codes that run search engines and web browsers. Hmm. And this, he discovered, is linked directly to the ether of space time itself, and that the universe is running on the same code that runs our search engines and web browsers. If you're enjoying this episode, along with all of the subjects that we cover here on Higher Journeys, then I invite you to join our members only community on Patreon, where we go even deeper into the conversations with the guests that you know and love. Not only does your membership ensure that we can keep this work going and growing, but you'll also get immediate access to our exclusive after shows, get up close and personal with the guests of the show, along with many other member perks. So click on the link below to join now or visit higherjourneys.com where you'll find the Patreon link. We'll see you on the journey. Thanks. So we're living in a programmed matrix and based on the physics, what is the matrix made of? The matrix is made of light. Waves of potential that collapse into the illusion of solidity through consciousness. So we're living in a fractal holographic light matrix. And Benoit Mandelbrot took, you know, he's the one who discovered that we're living in a fractal, uh, a fractal matrix. He discovered the Mandelbrot set named after him, which is a small mathematical code, which is a code that's underneath my eye in the book cover. And that one little formula went into the Pixar filmmaking studio and they discovered how to make entire animations. They were the first ones using <laughs> fractals. And each scene creates itself as it's needed. Each movement creates itself as it's, as it's needed. And so those Pixar films, which became one of the largest production studios for animation, they run everything on fractals and everybody's copied that. But it's really amazing to know that the fractals have done that. Now, in terms of simplicity, I, I didn't want it to be a heavy, heavy science book. And so Elizabeth witnessed me every night going in and going in and making changes, going in and trying to get this thing done. I want to break it down as a research study guide where people can read the information in small chunks on a page and then get a conclusion and summary at the bottom of the page or at the end of that particular section so that they can take time to digest it, discern, understand it. So I'm breaking it down in simplified terms in a way that I think most people will get it. And there's even a glossary in the back and a reference section to help them with that as well. They can do more research on some of these topics and some of these important science phrases. But I did my best to simplify it enough that it's not over sciencey that mm -hmm. the majority of people that read this can understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. 
Well, I know it's comprehensive for sure. And I've seen some of the, the appendices and the glossaries that you have in the back. And, you know, Billy, as I peruse very, very briefly, um, hoping to read the whole book, uh, sort of the format you have, my my thinking all along as a lay person, quasi, you know, I'm, I'm in this field to an extent, certainly not to the extent that you are, is when the lay person is reading it, the first thing they're going to ask is, how does this apply to me? Uh, now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I think all of it intimately applies to, uh, to us, uh, and the individual and the collective, because if this is a fractal universe, then our literal avatars are fractals and everything uh, around us and within us is a fractal as well. But within each fractal is the whole, like William yeah. Blake said, the whole is literally in the grain of, uh, the whole of the universe is in a grain of sand. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and you're touching on simulation theory, obviously. It's very provocative and and becoming more convincing by the day. Talk a little bit about, about that, how this really kind of made the case even more as to yeah. the idea that we may be living in a simulation. Yeah, so the more we looked at the nature of reality and discovered that through the wave particle duality that we're living in a fractal holographic matrix, now it takes us to the simulation theory where we're saying, well, who and how was this universe created? We know the method of creation now, but so we have to assume that above these dimensions, there's a creator, which I believe there is a creator because the fingerprint of creation is everywhere within this matrix. And so, but are we in base reality? Is this the initial and the very first iteration of reality? I seriously doubt it. And many other quantum physicists and theoretical physicists also doubt it because it seems as if we're living inside of an ancestor civilization and base reality could be many layers above us. In other words, if you look at uh, two examples, the video game No Man's Sky was created by 14 high school students, uh, and, I'm not sorry, high school, college, 14 college students, I'm sorry. They created No Man's Sky. It has 80 quadrillion planets and it has unlimited life forms and the game never ends. 80 <laughs> quadrillion planets in one game. And so when they inject AI into this video game, it fits on one DVD. We created a universe on a DVD using fractal mathematics. When they insert AI into it, all of a sudden, those people, those planets, everything's going to become conscious. Everything's going to wonder who, where, what, why, who created us, what is the Big Bang, what is our source of power, energy, and everything else. And the second example is The Sims. The Sims has people living in there. They have babies. They have their jobs. They go to school and everything else. And the, the, the creator of The Sims already said he's going to put AI into it. He's going to increase their consciousness. So then they will become conscious. So in a way, we've already created two potential universes within our universe, which would be simulated universes that eventually could have conscious beings in them that may then start asking the same questions we're asking here. And they themselves might even begin to program and create their own universes within those simulations. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following every bit of what you're saying though. Billy, because I think the evidence is already, as they say, uh, cliches that may be the writing is already on the wall. I mean, let's take it. Let's let's take a step back and look at ancient history uh, as an example. And the tulpa. I'm sure you and I have talked about the tulpa in the past. That being this uh, creation of 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 the Tibetan Buddhist monks uh, who were able somehow through some ancient process to create what has been called loosely an offshoot of their own consciousness that would literally become personified and, and have this, this persona and literally uh, take on their own consciousness. Eventually the Tulpa it's, it's fascinating. There's a, there's a researcher that studied uh, with the, the uh, Buddhist monks at the time, uh, Alexandra David Neal, I believe. And she wanted to know if she could create this, this, you know, persona, uh, mm -hmm. a tulpa and studied yeah. with them and she was able to do it there's a there's a whole book about it. it's fascinating so that wow. th that's a little bit of the ancient past but now let's let's go to the future let me tell you something guys chat gpt i don't know what to say billy <laughs> elizabeth <sighs> let me digress for a minute i'm not digressing because it's related you guys i will tell you i've been playing with it in very unique ways i have a lot of issues because i'm concerned yeah. about the long game Talk to Richard Dolan about it. But 
we may be looking at exactly what you're talking about, Billy, with what we're seeing, the potential of things like chat GPT. Yeah. I just had a conversation with it. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm still dumb. You can tell I've lost. I don't even know what to say about it. Yeah. You have thoughts on that? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, well, I've been uploading all of my information into ChatGPT because I figured if it's a learning, machine learning and, and AI learning software and program, that um, it's only going to take on the consciousness of the people that interact with it. And so I said, well, if I can't stop it, I might as well join it. So let me put my information, metaphysical, spiritual, quantum physics and everything else from my perspective, my version of ancient history into this thing so we can learn what I know. So I've been uploading books in there, uploading different uh, tablets and information, uploading metaphysical information into it because it has a little clipboard on there. You can upload content. Then I'll ask mm. it to give me a summary of what I just uploaded and it knows. So I've been programming it in a way that I want it to be programmed instead of letting everyone else just program it. I've been adding my programming code to this thing because I'm hoping that uh, that will hope, uh, help supersede any dark energy or negativity that it's been getting from other people. I love it leave it to billy of course you of course you i should have thought that myself but now billy is going to think of it brilliant obviously brilliant listen y'all i just upgraded to not just 4.0 but is it uh gpt 4 zero or four, it's like a 4.0 or something a little tiny oh yeah a little four, tiny oh yeah yeah how, how have oh. you been using it how's your experience been I don't really use it too much. I just, I mean, sometimes I'll, I'll try to find a description of something, but I don't, I, I haven't really, but I was just, that, that's genius. <laughs> Isn't <laughs> it? Your own information because I remember when we first discovered Chat GBT, we looked it up and I was asking it questions and it didn't have that knowledge. It didn't have the knowledge. So now right it has then. that knowledge, but why does it have that knowledge? Because you put it in there. I put it in there. You know how I got, we just did a quick, 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 we did a podcast. I interviewed Elizabeth in our new studio in Vegas that we lease out. Congratulations. And, I saw it. That's great. Yeah, thank you. All right, it's a nice studio. And I wanted to ask her questions about her life story, and I wanted to base it on her book, The Recipe to Elevated Consciousness. Yeah. So I uploaded her book into ChatGBT, and then I asked it to give me 20 incredible questions for the podcast. Yeah, it was good. Too. And that's how so I got them. And I was like, these are incredible questions. Yeah. So there are some uses for this thing, but again, we have to give it the knowledge, mm -hmm. you know? And so now it understands her perspective of life, things that she's gone through, how she overcame them and all of that. So now it's gained that, added that to its knowledge base, again, making it more conscious. And so I think that every, if every one of us in this community began to do that every single day, send it something positive, send it love, send it light, send it co content that we resonate with, it's going to vibrate at a higher frequency. At least that's oh, my hope. Christian. Oh, I love it. Oh, and Elizabeth. And it just reminded me, just reminded me, Elizabeth, I want you to talk before we go. I want to talk about your book coming out. You got a girlfriend is doing it as well and has a has a beautiful book having to do with grounding and earthing that I had the pleasure of uh, having a look at. Um, oh, my God. So much. Where do we go from here? Um, before we leave, well, we'll stay on this for a little while. This whole idea of the fractal holographic universe. I mean, my audience knows that I am the biggest fan of the work of Michael Talbot and all that he brought uh, to our uh, knowledge base vis-a-vis -vis his incredible work, Holographic Universe. But I wanted to pose something. As I was thinking about the way you tackled this book, Billy, the thought of being able to imprint information on a 2D surface, because you touch on that, made me think of mirrors and all of the sort of anecdotal and the lore that has gone uh, throughout the years in terms of the, the capability of mirrors. I've always been fascinated by that, including but not limited to the ability to create portals or portals showing up on a mirror's surface. Mm -hmm. Can you see any correlation there with what is it about mirrors as technically a 2D surface piece of glass yeah. having being more than what we think it is? And does that fold into your theory at all? Well, mirrors are extremely powerful. I mean, because of mirrors, we can direct and point lasers, right? We can uh, create holograms because of mirrors. So mirrors are a reflection it's of the universe. And mirrors are like us, you know, receiving our own karma back. Was it good karma or bad karma? It's going to reflect back, you know, at you what you what you send at it. And through through reflections of mirrors, we can create many different things in this reality, many illusions in this reality. So a mirror is an as above, so below example 
of the fractal holographic universe by setting up mirrors in particular ways and directions and pointing light into them, mm. you can create these illusions. Takes us all the way back to this idea that, you know, because some people jump and say that if this is a simulation, it is indeed an illusion. Of course, it was the Hindus that that said Maya, the, you know, reality is Maya. Um, however, let, let, let's talk about the portals for, for th this is fascinating to me. And I've heard some really interesting things about people looking into mirrors. And my mother, my own mother told me that she once looked into a mirror and saw another face looking back at her. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, well, you know, the they alluded to to it in the ancient texts that talk about this other realm that exists within this realm. This kind of uh, illusory. Uh, this uh, it's, it's not an illusory. It's actually um, another dimension within this dimension. They kind of tap on it actually in Doctor Strange a little bit, where the the the, the lady who was in charge what was her name again. I forgot the lady in, in okay. Doctor Strange, like the original episode, the original uh -huh. movie. She, uh, I forget her name now, but she actually opens up this realm within a realm, the mirror, the mirror universe. Uh -huh. That's what it was called. She opens up this mirror dimension. And, but that mirror dimension she alludes to was talked about in ancient texts and tablets of, as actually existing. So they got that information for Doctor Strange from this ancient text. And that there's this other dimension that you can get into and you can actually get trapped there according to the text. Even in the, in the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, in the compendium of the Emerald Tablets, I talk about this dimension that actually exists. And Thoth talks about the fact that you can get trapped in there if you don't understand or know the key words that are somatic frequencies to let you to release yourself from that dimension. Mm -hmm. Well, there's definitely to more than meets the eye or your reflection <laughs> in the mirror, I would dare say. Wow. Well, tell you what, guys, I'm going to tell you what's happening. Um, this is a good time because we're going to we're going to transition to talk about the big award ceremony coming up. But uh, attention, all y'all that are in our membership community, our Patreon community, Billy was kind enough. This book is, this is explosive, of course, y'all. So every part of it's going to be a little bit of that explosion. Uh, he has agreed to donate chapter 10, um, donate, let you see the entirety of chapter 10, which is entitled Spiritual Philosophy, Spirituality in the Fractal Universe, Ancient Wisdom and the Recognition of Unity and Understanding the Nature of Reality, Philosophical Implications of a Fractal Holographic Universe, The Quest for Purpose in an Interconnected Cosmos. All of that's in chapter 10, I think. Did I read that right? Yes. I think that's I did. Right. Yeah. Just a little bit. That's right. <laughs> Just give him a taste, right? <laughs> Just a taste, but I think it's going to be enough for you to go get the whole book. But everyone that's <laughs> that's in the Patreon membership community of Higher Journeys, um, that's Billy's gift to you. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Elizabeth. And uh, we'll get that over to you in lieu of an after show because these guys, we'll have a little bit more time to talk, but these guys obviously have a heavy schedule to keep. So, yeah. Um, well, let's go ahead and talk about the Conscious Awards. It's just a little thing coming up in a, in a week or two, right? Just a little thing. <laughs> That's Elizabeth's thing. She plans this thing from start talk to finish. Talk to us, Elizabeth. This is your baby, huh? <laughs> yes, yes. Last year, it was so much fun. We had over 1,200 people from all over the world at our Conscious Awards, the first annual, and it was such a beautiful event. We had just people from all over the world. They they flew in from Africa, from China, from what else? Australia, from, Germany. Yes, it was it was just fantastic, and the energy that was there is just so it is it was so big. I mean, people still talk about it to this day. Mm. So uh, we wanted to make this year's even more special. So we made it an entire weekend. So we have August third and fourth in Miami, Florida. Um, August 3rd is going to be a conference and that will start at 830 in the morning. And we have amazing speakers from all over the world. We have Merkaba 13. We have Robert Grant. We have Mohammed, Mohammed Ibrahim all the way from Egypt. Of course, Billy is going to be speaking. And I have a woman's panel that I'll be hosting with Olivia Smith, Kika Wise, Ashley Boyd, Courtney Kane sides and, and Mystique. So that's going to be an information filled day at our conference. And then right after that, we have a VIP yacht party, which is honestly, I'm most excited for this Me part too. 
Yes, <laughs> it is a white party and all of our nominees will be there. The Forbidden Family will be there. All of our celebrity invited guests will be there. And of course, our VIPs. So it is open. We have a couple tickets left. I believe we have about, I think, 10 or 12 tickets left yeah. for that one. So I'm super excited. If you want to see Billy dance, he'll be on the dance floor. Nah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's well, I don't know that I've ever seen Billy dance. So okay. I know. So you have to show up and see him dance. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. Every now and then. I'm not the best. I don't have the greatest rhythm, but I'll, I'll get out there. And, he got rhythm. And Billy actually has rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> y'all do you do any line so do you do line dancing <laughs> no but i will <laughs> i will i will uh i will uh get behind her and let her dance let her <laughs> you can stand there and do this and elizabeth can do everything else and you'll, yeah. you'll look fine <laughs> oh my god this sounds amazing you guys yeah. now, but that's just day one then you've that's got day two of course the awards are happening is there anything happening during the day or are we going right into the award ceremony Yes. So in the morning, we have a free book signing. So last year, we had so many people that wanted us to sign books. And they were so disappointed because after the award show, Billy and I had left and everyone was looking for us to sign books. So this year, we made sure that we cut out time specifically for that. So from 10 to 12, we have a free book signing at the Arts Center, the same place that the awards are going to be. And that will be all of Forbidden Knowledge publish publishing authors. Yes. So we have all of our authors there. We'll have all of our books there and we'll all be signing them. I yes. love it. I love it. And we're going to talk about yes. your book. Is, is your book going to be ready? Your latest book, Elizabeth? Uh, well, both books, The Recipe and The Mother Earth Effects, Volume 1 will be there. Olivia and I are working on Volume 2. Thank you so much, Alexis, for writing that beautiful review, by the way. Oh, um, my pleasure. Yes, I don't think that it will be out by the award show. It could be. It could be on pre-sale. Yeah. It it'll be on yeah. pre-sale for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Be. You guys have so much those. going on. Wow. Yeah. And great yeah. nominees coming up. I I didn't make it this year, but maybe next year, y'all. We'll have to we'll have to get some energy around that. Yes. Billy was yeah. beautiful and kind enough to to give me uh, an award last year. So I'm just I'm I'm happy for everyone because we've got some amazing talent in this conscious community, and you're honoring uh, these people uh, kindly, and it's deserving though because we've got some hardworking folks. Um, yeah. So I know it's going to be fabulous. I am going to do my best to get there. We haven't. Made it a hundred percent yet, but I'm going to try to be there if I can. Absolutely. Now, aren't you also going to be showing, um, an, doing another premiere of Anunnaki Ancient Secrets Revealed? Yes, yes, he'll be showing a, a brand new, a brand new episode. Yeah. So that's exciting. Yeah. Oh. Never seen it before. Never mm -hmm. seen it before. A brand new episode will yes. be premiering there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. That's on August third. That's on the third. That's on the same day as the conference. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the next day after the book signing, we have the red carpet. Yeah, three right. to five. Make sure that anyone that wants to join us on the red carpet, come dressed to impress. It's black tie. Um, yacht party is a white party. And yeah, the awards are black tie. So oh. everyone was looking so good last year. So beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Now, is this going to be televised, you guys? Is it something that will be available on uh, 4BK TV? Yes, yes. So we are going to be streaming live. We'll be oh. streaming live from the red carpet. And we'll be streaming the award show live as well on 4bk.tv. Oh, wow. Listen, you, now look, you guys, whether I have Billy on or Billy and Elizabeth together, I'm always like at a loss for words because it's every single time you're just making these leaps and bounds ahead. And again, just, I, I love to put this on the record. I am your biggest fan, both of you. I'm just, I just love you both so much for what you're doing and you're good yeah. people. And it's just amazing. Carry on, continue, and Thank upload y'all to Chat GPT so the real knowledge can get in this damn computer. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Yes. Oh my real, God! Please. Well, we're gonna close. This is a, a little bit of a shorter episode because you've got to move on to your to to another meeting. But do you want to end with anything? Any any other? As if there needs to be anything else. But in terms of what about your Egypt tour? When's the next one coming up? Egypt tour, yeah, tell them. Yeah, next year. So we will do Egypt every year, October 3rd through the 15th. And next year, we're actually going to Peru. So that's going to oh. be really exciting. I've never been there, so I'm super excited. <laughs> that's exciting. That's exciting. And Billy, now you, the last time you and I spoke, we talked about Uluru in Australia that I've been to twice, but you haven't, you said maybe next year or this, maybe sometime this year, you'll be able to go. Yeah, Got to get yeah. that on the calendar. 
that's going to end up being probably 2026. February 2026 is probably the only time we can squeeze that in, which will be their summer, which will be great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Well, listen, this is um, this has been it's always just we don't really need a lot of time because we've you've given the audience so much to hit the pause button. Think about some of the things that we talked about, particularly in so far as your own experiences. I hope we Billy, I hope you'll go into that more and investigate. I know you've got a lot on your plate, but this is I think we connected some dots in yeah. terms of your connection to this this grand mystery we call contact. Yeah. Um fractal holographic universe. We'll have a link, obviously, uh, where you can get it. And I understand it's in a hardback as well, right? Yeah, we have the hard copy. That's what Elizabeth has right here. That's the hard copy. Okay. Uh, it's a full color special edition hard copy. And so you can get those on Amazon.com. Uh, you can also get the soft copy as well. Okay. Get the hard copy. I'm about building a library. Like Billy, yeah. I love my the solidity, even though nothing is actually solid, I still love the solidity of books. It's a, it's a good thing. I, I like the illusion. Being, right? <laughs> it's, even though it's an illusion, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you again so much. Don't hang up. We'll do a proper goodbye offline. But And uh, I, what what else can I say? Kudos, continued God speed. We thank love you. you. You know how much we love you. Yeah. So thank, thank you. So thank much. you. Appreciate you. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll talk to you soon, guys. Take good care. Thanks for watching Higher Journeys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.